Welcome back to another episode of Gumball Love. I'm your host, Melissa Ledger. All right, today we're going to talk about butterflies. Are they good? Are they bad? And why does everyone get so fired up about this topic? I feel like we are emotionally attached to our butterflies. And so I thought it would be a great time to talk about it. I also was just thinking about it because I am getting married very soon on July 30th. And I am getting butterflies all the time. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, I just I think about this grand event, or I think about our first look moment. And I get butterflies, I get a little bit nervous, because it's like, all these people are coming into town. And it's a big deal. I'm getting married and this massive commitment and all the details coming together. And so I looked up what this actually means, and I've actually never looked this up before, and I cannot believe it. But guess what butterflies actually are? (laughs) So it's a little disappointing because it seems much more glamorous. But it says, during stressful times, many people have a loss of appetite, and that's because physiologically, our stomachs don't have much use for us when we're in danger. The decrease in blood flow to the stomach is what gives us the sensation of butterflies. Okay, so it's a reaction from your gut where it's like, I'm nervous, I now need more resources, and I the last thing I want my body to focus on is digesting food. So the blood vessels around your stomach and intestines constrict, the digestive muscles contract, and it's the drop in blood flow that makes you feel like you have little winged insects fluttering around in your stomach. So is it necessarily a bad thing to get butterflies? So then I read on and it said, I'm just reading from different things. I just literally Googled what gives you butterflies in your stomach. So this is from various sources from uh, parade.com to Britannica.com. So just go with me on this. And it says that your limbic or emotional brain activates the vagus nerve that goes from your brain to your gut. When you get nervous or when you get excited, he says to his patients, this is Dr. Amen, who I love from the Amen Clinic. He says, excitement or nervousness, it's the same thing. And so I, when, when I met Ian, I had tons of butterflies and I just made a post about this. And so then I hear other coaches say, if you're having butterflies, it, it's a bad thing because you are misinterpreting infatuation for a much more meaningful connection. And so I have had both happen to me. And for a long time, I couldn't speak about this because I would think, oh my gosh, I would get the butterflies. I would get that intense feeling of this is the one Because when you're so full of anticipation and excitement and nervousness, and you meet somebody that you have chemistry with, that combination feels magical and wonderful. And so we don't want to think that that is a bad thing. It's a huge downer if someone says, oh, yeah, if you're getting that feeling, that's a red flag. So I think both can be right that we want to be careful that we're not saying because we're having this feeling, it does mean this is the end all be all. Because I've had that feeling, and it was not the right person. But I've also had the feeling and it was the right person. So when I met Ian, my pupils dilated. So I look like the black eyed, you know, weirdo, but it was it was a very out of body experience. And I really didn't understand why I was feeling that I was very nervous. You know, when I saw him online, I just immediately had this feeling. But I've had that feeling before. Okay, I've looked at a guy and thought, wow, this guy's really good looking. And so for I would be so excited for that first date. And I know that I spent hours getting ready for my date with Ian. And I've spent hours getting ready for dates with other guys. But I remember Ian was the last guy I ever did that for. And I probably had not done that for anyone. And I don't even know, even five plus years, maybe eight years before him. So it's like I've done it before, but not very often. So once in a while, certain people will trigger you to think, ooh, this could be something. This is really special. Like I really liked, I loved his pictures. I loved the way he wrote his profile. 
We had great conversation via text. We had talked on the phone a couple of times. We got along really well. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I really want this to work. I, I really want this to be something because this is everything I've been looking for. And so I thought that the key thing in the definition, and I don't know if you caught it, but Dr. Amen nailed it as he does so many times. If you don't know Dr. Amen, he is amazing. He says, when you get nervous or when you get excited, you're going to have this feeling. So nervous is rooted in fear, but excitement is anticipation. So maybe you have one or the other, or a little bit of both, but that's okay because we're going to have butterflies. You have butterflies when you go on stage, right? If you're going to speak on stage and if you don't have butterflies before you go on stage and you're like, no, I never get nervous. Guess what? Here's a newsflash. You're a bad speaker. (laughs) People that don't get nervous to publicly speak are usually super boring and they think they're really amazing. And that's why they're not nervous and their ego is ginormous and the crowd is snoring and snoozing. So Sorry to break it to you if you're one of those people, but you might want to check your entertainment value in your speeches because most of the best performers, even the rock stars that have the most experience, they get nervous. Some people throw up every time before they go on stage. Thank God I don't do that because I am terrified of throwing up. But anyway, that feeling of nervousness and excitement is simply lack of blood flow to the gut. So it's just your body is anticipating something and you're nervous or you are excited. Okay, this is all that means. So let's not over analyze butterflies to the point where we are questioning how we're feeling. Now, if you're nervous, it's because you might have a little anxiety about going in there. So I want you to also think about is this anxiety or is this excitement? And you can actually channel and really focus that energy a little bit better. I remember uh, Shalene Johnson, who is a speaker and a coach, and she said she will feel nervous before she goes on stage, but she will tell herself, I'm so excited. And help her mind shift into, I'm not nervous, I'm excited, when she knows she's really nervous. But it helps you to go in with a different energy. And you can use this anytime, not just on dates. And so what I think helps if if you're having this feeling before a date, you can walk in and say, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to meet you. I loved your profile. Like just say all the things. Because have you ever been in the crowd where a speaker will say, I'm so nervous, you guys. You have no idea how nervous I was and how much I planned for this. So I want to do a really good job. And sometimes just being a little bit vulnerable will help ease some of that. And so I really wish I would have said that to Ian on our first date. Oh my gosh, I was so so nervous to meet you or I have like nervous jitters right now because he also was probably feeling the same way. And so I think that would have helped us relax a little better because we were both kind of, I'm certainly, I was probably more awkward than he was. (laughs) But you know, it just, you just kind of like when you can admit it, when you're not trying to pretend, sorry, I just moved my chair. When you're not trying to pretend like you're super cool, because that that's also, I think I was trying to pretend so hard that I was super cool, but I was just so excited and so attracted to him and just enjoying him. It was just not only how good looking he was and yeah, I was his eyes are just so blue and whatever he had on, his eyes were just like so sparkly and amazing. And I just, I was having all of the, all that nervousness and excitement. So what I help my clients do, because yes, the first dates can be great, but what do you do when it's date two and date three? Because I still had nervousness and excitement in date two. Date two, we went to a movie and I was late. (laughs) I actually wasn't late, but I just could not catch a taxi. And I ended up taking a rickshaw And he knew Midtown traffic in New York so well. He was like, how did you get a taxi? And I just stared at him and he goes, did you take a rickshaw? And I was like, oh my God, how is this guy so smart? So he's so smart and so fast that that would also make me a little bit more nervous. So I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot, there is no dominating this guy. There is no like his, his intellectual horsepower. Uh, I call him the galaxy brain right now. So it's like, I really felt like, there's nothing that's going to get by this guy. And that made me a little on edge and a little nervous because combining that with attraction and chemistry, it was just, you know, it would make me feel like, oh, so 
what did that actually mean? And there are two schools of thought. There's one where this is actually not the right person for you. And they're making you feel nervous because you're interpreting sexual chemistry and intensity as a connection. So the question is, that feeling of nervousness and excitement combined with infatuation. The million dollar question is, in which instance does it grow to love? And in which instance does it fall off and become what I call gumball love, the sugar high? Is it a sugar high of infatuation? Or is it a sugar high of infatuation that can lead to something long term and more meaningful? And a lot of times we're not able to tell because we cannot see the red flags. So let's go back into that date. On our first date, there was no there was no sexual innuendos. He did not even try to touch me. I mean, we might have given each other a hug hello, but that was it. He was extremely respectful. He got a taxi, took me home. He did not try to kiss me on the first date although I was a little disappointed, (laughs) but he just didn't. I mean, we could have had like a little peck or something, but he was very respectful. So although I was having all those feelings, he was not presenting with any red flags. It was respectful conversation. It was very fun. We laughed. We had uh, a nice dinner, some drinks. It was very easy. And although I was having those feelings, there was nothing else present. Now, if we had had that same experience but he all of a sudden became very sexual or affectionate or physical or making comments about my body or my lips or, you know, whatever, like, you know, you know, when it crosses the line. And so you can have butterflies in chemistry. But then when it crosses over into areas where eh, I don't know if this should really be happening on a first date. And this is where I help a lot of my clients stop and make key decisions, where the old you would say, oh, I had so much chemistry, I felt the butterflies and everything was amazing. And although then we ended up sleeping together the first night. That's how that happens. Because yes, you can you can have chemistry with someone. And it's really just lust. So sometimes it's one person commented that she said, you know, I felt a lot of butterflies when I thought someone was out of my league. And so That's another thing that can be more for the nervousness or more on the nervousness side versus the excitement side. And so when you feel like he's out of your league, that's that's where you can then be tempted into crossing boundaries that you normally wouldn't. And this is where we become fearful that we're going to ruin the connection. I remember being in this situation many times where the connection felt really powerful And then they would do something that would cross the line. And then I would feel like, oh, man, I don't want to ruin this moment, but I don't really feel comfortable anymore. But this is sometimes where the butterflies give us the illusion that all of this is okay. You start overlooking the fact that you were uncomfortable because there was so much anticipation for this date. And you had such high hopes that now you've pushed the intensity level so high that if red flags start to pop up, you're not able to react to them the way that you need to be. And so although butterflies are great and they are a positive thing and they can be wonderful and they've been great and they've been par- terrible for me too. They've, you know, the outcome has been, you know, has has gone both directions with butterflies. And so I think that we might put a little bit too much emphasis on them. Like, oh my gosh, if I'm having butterflies, then it must mean something. And if we feel like it means something, then that's where we over all the red flags become yellow or green, or we don't even see them because we don't want to see them because we want this experience to be what we had imagined. We over romanticize it. And so that's where I want to also help you see, okay, so what are the red flags that I need to be noticing and what red flag is going to override the butterfly experience that I had in the beginning. And this is what I teach my clients. So if you're sitting here thinking, yes, Melissa, this is exactly what I'm afraid of. And we just talked about this in the group where one of my clients said, I'm still afraid that I'm going to make the wrong choice. And we talked about how 
Look, though, you are. She's in the program right now, and she is sending us screenshots, and she's filtering, and she's able to see where she needs to stop communication, where it was fun and where it stopped being fun. And she's not getting caught up in all of these conversations and all of these you know, sugar high romances that aren't leading her anywhere. And sometimes we don't really see it. But this is this is the goal I want for you that once I can train you to see all of these red flags, you will not be able to unsee them. And I don't know of any other patterns. I When you learn in Level Up for Love, all of the flavors, because we go in depth, all the flavors of attention, all the behavior patterns. And there are a lot, but it takes it takes a little bit of time to wrap your mind around it. But this is part of the process. This is why I expanded this program to 90 days. And then I added a group coaching program so that when you're out in the wild, so to speak, you're on dating apps that you have a resource that you can plug into that says, okay, here's what I'm experiencing. What am I seeing? What am I missing? And you just get better and better and better. And your filter becomes stronger and stronger. And as you are building yourself in your self-esteem, you're also refining your skills. So there's two paths, building your self-worth and also refining that skill of filtering so that you know what the red flags are and you're not going to question yourself. This is the number one thing we're doing. We're out there, we're with guys, we're dating, and we're seeing behavior and we're like, I'm not sure what to think of that. I don't know what that means does that mean something bad? Is this is this like something I need to walk away from? Or is this something that I can say, okay, this isn't great, but it's not relationship ending. And this is what I help you do. And I'll probably surprise you in areas where I can guide you to be a little bit more flexible, because nobody is perfect. So I've studied this for just counted last night, 14 years which is insane. And I can't believe it's been that long. But this concept came to me. So in its infancy, so it's 2022, it was about 2008. I want to say maybe even 2007. I'm going to say 2008, just to be sure. So that's 14 years that I started thinking about attention seeking behavior. And now it's developed into a proven framework, where you can come in, take an assessment, look at the guy and say, what are the red flags? And this assessment has every single possible red flag. I don't know of an instance where we've missed something, which is really saying something. I'm I'm so proud of this assessment. And I'm actually in the process of making it even better. And right now it's available to clients only, but I'm about to make this available so you can purchase your own assessment online and you will be able to keep your results. And then once you have your results, you'll be able to email them to me and say, okay, Melissa, maybe we should do a coaching session, an intensive, or if you want to join the Level Up for Love program. And we go in deep because I want you to think about where you are in terms of your relationship status. And for me, when people say, oh, Melissa, I'm not dating yet, so I don't know if it makes sense to work with you. It makes the most sense to work with me when you're not dating. Because if you're not dating right now and you're single, let's just use that as an example. Because you can work with me in any stage. But if some people think that it, they have to have somebody but if you if you have have an ex that you're thinking about or you have a pattern you're afraid this is this is my ideal client you have a pattern of dating these attention seeking guys you're otherwise very settled and have a relatively normal life you have a good job you have friends you're like i have it together in every other area maybe i'm not perfect you know some of us could spend a little bit more time in the gym or we could eat better or you know maybe you need to change a job or you need to change you know where you're living or you need some hobbies or something like nobody has a perfect life but you know you're holding it together for the most part and you're doing what you need to do you're paying your bills all the things but for some reason in the romance department it's not working and so when you come in as a client we have you have you take the assessment and we look at your last relationship or the one before. And we immediately uncover the things that you don't know, the patterns that you can't see. And all of a sudden, you see them. And it is the best 
most eye-opening reveal that I give my clients. And it never gets old to me. And it's so much more effective than anything I was doing in the past. So even if you've been a client of mine in the past, if you take this assessment, we'll be able to literally diagnose a guy. And so even if he's relatively new in your life, so let's take take it a step further. Let's say you are dating. You can use this assessment to your advantage to say, okay, as I'm dating, I'm going to hit it against this assessment and make sure there's nothing I'm missing. So I have you, have your back here. So you're going to be able to clearly see what you're not seeing. And as you continue to go through the process and you retake this assessment on different guys, you're going to start to feel like, okay, I know what I'm doing. It's like learning a dance. It's like learning a workout. It's like, you know, you didn't know how to drive in a certain direction or you needed directions the first time, but the second or third time you remember all the turns and suddenly you become completely independent. You won't need me long term. You're only going to need me in the short term, but this time period where you learn how to filter, how to know what those red flags are, how to have a conversation, how to go on dates and enjoy them, how to show up actually yourself, how to communicate. Imagine showing up on a date and having your shoulders down, sitting with good posture, smiling, comfortably holding the menu, comfortably ordering whatever you want to order, not feeling like you have to order something that impresses him, feeling a sense of comfort in your own skin, being able to relax and smile and allow it to happen as it happens without overthinking, without overanalyzing, without being so fearful, without worrying what he's thinking and actually showing up with the confidence that you're going to be saying, what do I think? Do I think this guy is somebody for me? Is this what I'm looking for? And if it's not, imagine just being able to have fun in the process and enjoying dating again, actually being able to have fun with it, not overthinking it, not being critical of yourself, not being critical of the guy, not going in jaded and, and actually knowing what you have to offer and feeling super confident in that. Do you think that a Mercedes Benz sits on the lot and feels bad about what it has to offer? It does not. Mercedes Benz knows what it has to offer. And it's not jealous of anything because it's a Mercedes. You know, when you think about high end things, they don't look over at other, other things and wish they were different. There's a uniqueness. There is a, a pride that you will now have once you understand. But see, right now, you probably don't understand really what you have to offer, how unique you truly are, what you're bringing to the table. And what I help you do is really harness that so that when you're sitting there and somebody isn't really picking up on your value or they're not recognizing who you are, you're able to recognize that they don't recognize it. And it's okay because not everyone can walk into a jewelry store and understand the value of each diamond, right? I mean, most of us can't. With the naked eye, we really can't do it. We have to have the help of an expert to say, how much is this diamond versus that diamond? What's the difference between this one and this one? Although this one is bigger, the smaller one is more expensive. Why? Well, that's because it has better cut and better clarity. Oh, what's that? Less inclusions, more inclusions. People that understand how to look at diamonds and then they know what tools to look at, to use to look at the diamond even further, they can assess the whole picture very easily. And then they assess a value. And so what I teach you is how to be on dates with someone who looks at you and sees the diamond, who understands the value and understands your cut and your clarity and how you are built as a woman and what that means in the big picture you got to have somebody that can recognize that. But so often we're with someone who doesn't have the tools, the eyes to see, the complexity to understand, the maturity. And so we are putting so much value in their opinion and they really don't even understand what they're doing. They don't they don't know what they need. They don't understand what they need. They don't understand who you are, what you have to offer. And so when they walk away or they ghost and we don't understand 
why we take that on ourselves, we beat ourselves up, we assume there's something wrong, and then we kind of put ourselves in the back row when we should be in the case, standing alone at the front and center. This is the best gem in the place. And I want to teach you how to see yourself that way because when the when your future husband sees you, he's going to recognize so much more than the shape of your body or the clothes that you're wearing. He's going to see your personality. He's going to see your energy. He's going to see the way you move, the way you smile, your your whole countenance. All of these things need to be present, need to be seen. And I think right now you're hiding a lot of that. And you don't even know you're hiding it because you've been doing it for so long. You're like a rosebud, tightly, tightly sitting there. And all we need to do is nurture you. All we need to do is put some sunshine, a little bit of water, and a little bit of fertilizer. Like what is, what are the ingredients that we need to add to you to make you fully expressed? And that is my work in a nutshell. So we have to know who we're looking at. And if we're getting butterflies, I want you to be, I hope you can look at that differently. Okay, butterflies means my stomach is now having less blood flow. (laughs) So that's that. And why is it? Because maybe I'm having tingles in my fingers. I'm having that sensation where I'm a little bit nervous and a little bit excited. So I'm going to enjoy this because this is fun. I'm fully present. And then I'm going to sit and have a good time. And I'm going to teach you this. And I hope that you reach out to me. So reach out to me, Melissa at gumballlove.com. Go to my Instagram, set up a quick discovery call. Let's talk for 30 minutes. And you can say, okay, tell me what you got. And I will, I'll lay the whole program out for you so you can see if this is right for you. But if you are ready to meet the right person, you are ready to figure out your patterns. You're ready to commit to this. You're ready to be like, all right, Melissa, show me what I have to do. Because I want to ask you, like, what else are you going to do? How much time are you going to let go by? Do you want to get your heart broken again? I mean, I look at if I had not figured out gumball love, I don't even know where I would be. If I, I follow this myself. And the more I knew, the less bad relationships I was in. So as I started to really tweak my process, it's sad because 14 years ago, I didn't really understand what I had. But over time, I started to really grasp, this is actually a thing. And I just couldn't believe that it was me coming up with a new concept. I just thought it would be kind of like a something I did for a couple years, and then I would give up on it. I never thought it would become my livelihood, my passion, my dream. And I never imagined being able to help so many other women. But I actually shouldn't say that. I did imagine it, but I just felt like this is too big of a dream. This is, can this be real? But every time I had aha moments, I was thinking, well, this has to be, this has to be able to help other women. And it does. And there are so many women that are in relationships now. They're having babies. My clients reach out to me. One just got engaged this week. She's actually secretly eloping. And she's like, can I tell you my secret? Nobody else knows, but I'm secretly eloping. And I'm so happy for this girl because she went through so many hard times and we worked together and it seemed impossible, but she found an amazing guy and she got a big rock on her hand and she's getting married. And he had children prior that just are incredible and she fits right in the kids love her and you just you just never know what's out there for you how close it is and i want to help you believe you are worthy and that is what her message said to me and i just like read it and read it and read it over and over and over again she said thank you for helping me believe i'm worthy of this and so i want to help you believe it because that is what's separating you from love is your belief and this takes a process of mindset shifts. So we need to go in and figure out what happened. Let's let's look at some X's and look at the patterns and figure out where your belief may have started to fade and how we can rebuild that in you so that when you approach dating again, it's not the old you going on the same old apps, having the same old result. This is a new you. This is a whole different mindset. This is a whole different energy. 
and you're going to level up the type of guys. You are not going to date the same type of guys you've dated before. This is a whole new ball game. So let's begin it. Reach out to me, Melissa at gumballlove.com. That's my email address. You can DM me on Instagram or Facebook, or you can join our private Facebook group. All the links are in all the places. So until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.